103.9 FM, WOZO Radio, Knoxville. Ladies and gentlemen, may I have your attention, please? Digital Free Thought Radio Hour. Hello and welcome to the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour on WOZO Radio 103.9 LPFM. We're right here in Knoxville, Tennessee. Today is April 18th, 2021. I'm Larry Rhodes, or Doubter 5. And as usual, we have our co host Wombat on the line with us. Hello, Wombat. Oh, oh, it's the Wombat. It sounds more like a wolf. Yeah, I know. I'm <laughs> figuring it out. I'm figuring it out. Yeah. Our guests today are Doubtfire, George Brooklyn, and Dread Pirate Higgs. Hello, all. Hi. Hello. Digital hello. Free Thought Radio Hour is a talk radio show about atheism, free thought, rational thought, humanism, and the sciences. And conversely, we'll also talk about religion, religious faiths, gods, holy books, and superstition. So buckle up. <laughs> What's our topic today there, Wombat? I have two topics. One, we're going to catch up, and then we're going to double dip. Before we okay. get into any more details about that, I'll throw it up to our own Dread Pirate Higgs for our weekly invocation. Perfect. So I'm going to read the uh, invocation given by Barrett Fletcher at the Kenai Peninsula Borough Assembly in Alaska. This was delivered uh, sometime in September uh, 2019. And here it goes. So I am called to invoke the power of the true inebriated creator of the universe the drunken tolerator of all the lesser and more recent gods and maintainer of gravity here on earth. May the great flying spaghetti monster rouse himself from his stupor and let his noodly appendages ground each assembly member in their seats. Raw. Amen. Amen. I thought and you were going to the say point. Bacchus. I thought yeah, he was going to talk yeah. about Bacchus there, the god of wine. Or Cthulhu <laughs> at this point. Uh, yeah. Dread, I really like your headband. What's going on there? Talk to me. Well, this is, I was, uh, I was in, you may recall I had talked to you about uh, uh, being asked to go in with my uh, tricorn to get my license renewed. Um, which I did, and then they promptly sent me a letter saying that it wasn't allowed. Um, and so, of course, I had a temporary paper uh, license that, uh, you know, I, I had to go get renewed and get another photo taken. So as it turns out, uh, through a little investigation, I realized that uh, ICBC actually has accommodation for people wearing head accessories. So okay. not head coverings, but head accessories. Okay. And so... And so working with uh, some fellow Pastafarians here, we came up with this headband, which exactly conforms, not as a religious head covering, but as a, an allowed and acceptable head accessory. Okay. And, and so I, I went to the driver's license service thing, and um, they actually kind of put up a fuss for a while, but I had in my hand the actual, um, <laughs> the actual sheet of paper, which shows, oh, look at that. And this is printed by ICBC, right? So uh -huh. yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I just handed it to him. I said, look, I conform to the uh, acceptable standards for head, uh, for head uh, accessories. Take my photo. And so I'm going to see here probably in a week or so um, what they do. But, uh, what, is, what is ICBC? Oh, sorry. That's the Ins Insurance Corporation of British Columbia, which is the... Uh, the um, the government uh, crown corporation that is responsible for driver's licenses and uh, and for uh, health cards. As okay, so it's it's like our motor vehicle bureau. It's like our DMV. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. Dread. So uh, so any fuss that I get from them, yeah. um, we're going to have other people go in wearing <laughs> similar uh, headbands or head accessories with like a Jesus fish. <laughs> or you know, perhaps some sort of a Sikh symbol, um, just so that if they argue uh, we don't allow symbols, you know, I don't know, we're just making a fuss. Okay, great. But hold on. Did they actually take your picture or not? Yep. They took your picture for a license? Yep. Good. Good. It's whether or not they're going to allow it, that's the thing. I'm, what do you I mean? might am so, getting a letter. So I'm not aware of the process. You mean they can take a picture, give you a license, and then rebuke it after the fact? 
So what they do is the picture goes to review. Oh, and I, so right now I'm sitting here with a paper copy and I've been doing this since 2016. So it's been a while since sure. I've had a, a photo ID driver's license. Um, but as you know, I have other forms of ID that uh, like my firearms license that do, de uh, do depict me with my, uh, with my holy tricorn. So. This is a quick update for anyone listening. Um, Dredd doesn't own a gun. His arms literally turn into fire. So that's, <laughs> yeah. that's the Canadian version of firearms, just letting you know. But uh, anyway, Dredd, so you will get a, essentially a letter saying, yeah, we accept this. You're good to go. Here's your full-on license in the mail. Yeah. Your actual so huh. and essentially what we're trying to do is, is let them paint themselves into a, a corner out of which they can't get out of them unless they get their feet all wet and sticky. Sure, because if they say you can allow headbands, but and even allow Christian iconography headbands, then exactly. what the hell, or excuse me, what the smeg is going on? <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise, yeah. oh, I crossed exactly. into that line. It's so it silly that I get upset. But yeah, Larry, what do you got? Doesn't Canada have an official religion? Well, uh, of course, because we are um, a Commonwealth country, uh, we fall under the Queen, um, whose religion, of course, is the Church of England. So um, it is a de facto state religion, uh, although our uh, Charter of Rights and Freedoms, um, you know, gives uh, certainly lip service to the idea that the freedom of uh, expression of religion or choice of religion is uh, a guaranteed right. But so clearly there are exceptions to that rule. Yeah, right. not an exclusive religion. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Scott, I knew a I knew a guy who really loved to eat Canadian ba uh, bacon. He was a real ham. <laughs> <laughs> Scott, we'll throw it. it up to you. <laughs> throw it up to you. How you been? What's going on with you? <laughs> Missed you Doing last okay, week. Man. How you been? Yeah, last week I um I uh, took a plane, a pink airplane. And cool. flew down to Tampa, Florida to visit my cousin. Yeah, it was a real good time. I've never been to Tampa, Florida, so I got a chance to check it out. And it's a really nice place. Mm -hmm. I imagine Florida. Might have been Calvin, actually. Yeah, I've never actually, I think I have been to Florida, but only driving through it. There's this really oh. weird route that takes you into Florida and back up into Georgia again. That's the only time I've ever been to Florida. Uh, it is it is as south as America gets, but it, it is like so insanely south that it doesn't feel like the south anymore. It's very bizarre. It's very bizarre. It's like yeah. California. California is to the west of the west. You know, the west is the east yeah. of California yeah. to me. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. yeah. You know? yeah. California. Hey, you grew up like... you grew up there, Tyrone. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I got used to it. I got I used did to not. it. Uh, I think as soon as I moved out of California, it was like, oh, no, where are all the Mexicans? I feel naked. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I mean, and why is the food so much worse here? Okay, but there's... Uh, but, uh, yeah, no, no, no. Uh, Scott, any cool things that you'd recommend that we check out if we go to Tampa, Florida anytime soon? Um, wow. So I would go... I would definitely hit the beach scene. That's what we did. We nice. went to the boardwalk. Um, it, it's such a big, it, it's a lot bigger than I imagined it was going to be. It's, yeah. it's really a huge place and it just go, and it's a really clean, um, you know, it's not like where I'm staying. Like I, I'm living in Florida now, but I'm in another town and here's like a, a you know, a church on every corner, a liquor sure. store on every corner. You know, it's one of those kind of towns. Sure. Um, but Tampa is more modernized. It looks like yeah. Irvine, California. It's yeah. like really scenic, really beautiful. The people are cool. It seems pretty progressive. You know, it's a cool place. I'm thinking it's about a metropolis. There. I'm thinking, yeah, very metropolis. Yeah. I yeah. think it's a function when you start bringing in people from different places to work and be around each other the mm -hmm. dogmatic attitudes fall away. And like this idea of like, Oh, we got to all work together. We're all different. It's not that big of a deal. We have a common value and common worth. Yeah, of course. This is our new standard that takes a hold every single time. That's why Atlanta. I love that kind of, yeah. I Atlanta, love that, that atmosphere. Yeah. 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 Or like New York, New York, for example, amazing. Mm -hmm. And then you drive up to like Rochester or just like 
50 miles out of like New York proper. And you're like, Whoa, this is just woods. <laughs> and people with shotguns. What in the world's going on? Uh, Larry, I'll throw it up to you next. How you been? What's going on with you? Don't say Facebooking and trolling. What's going on? Oh, I don't troll. Uh, I I do argue with people on Facebook. I do a lot of that. <laughs> um, I'm a member of a lot of atheist slash theist debate sites. Sure. So I spend a lot of time talking about certain topics and referencing material that I know about to help. Sure. But um, I spend about as much time playing computer games. So yeah. Well, I, I see you. I see you online quite often. Oh, yeah. oh, I'm on there a lot. Um, I'm seven. I'll turn seventy-one next month, no. so um, I'm in, enjoying retirement. In three years, you can run for president. It's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'll think about it for three years, and then I'll let you know. Okay, okay, I know that's what Biden <laughs> says too. He's like, oh, I'll let you know. Uh, Larry, I don't really have a stomach for talking to people or arguing online, and I found this website called Discord. There's a SE server in Discord. And you would, uh, you would hope that it'd be mostly people that want to talk about like the nature of like how to talk to people and have reliable conversations. And I, and that used to be how it was, but like, I haven't been in that fight in, in quite some time. And now it's sort of devolved into a say something so I can argue with it in the worst, most frustrating way possible. And you're just like, uh, there was a guy who was like, um, so, you know, intelligence is entirely genetically inherited. And I'm like, how, did you find the citation for that? It's like, no, but I think it is. If you have smart parents, you're going to have a smart kid. I'm like, don't you think there are like environmental factors that play into that hormones that might play into that? Like how the kids raise, what schools do they go to? Like, can't they develop? It's like, no, it's just genes, dude. It's like, which genes? I have a suspicion that it's some genes, but I don't have to pull the genes out. Let me try to ask you. It's like, oh, this is so frustrating. Why don't, why can't I just say you're wrong? <laughs> you believe it and then you look it up and we can be fine with it. Uh, yeah, I think papers... we can all agree that maturity is not a requirement for debating on Facebook. Yeah. Right. Discord, oh, Facebook. Yeah. I just don't have a stomach for it though. Yeah. I don't know if I can, I don't know if it's worth developing one or if I should just find a better audience. And I found like the best audiences I found have not been over the internet, but have been like outside because outside people tend to just be a little bit more, well, they're not anonymous. Nicer? They're not they're anonymous. Not, they're right in front of you, and they have to own what they say. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. Plus, they have to have an inclination to not stay indoors all the time, which seems to foster the worst echo chambers. Being outside mm -hmm. and talking to people tend to be the best sort of people that you can talk to. So, hey, if you want to talk to people, go outside and talk to people. There's higher standards of conversation out there. doesn't mean that it's bad if you only talk indoors. Go outside and talk to somebody. You can do it. Uh, George Brown, talk to me. How you been? That's a great shirt that you got on. Did you put it on just for this radio show? I did, in fact. It's Beautiful. hiding. The, it's hiding the shirt that's under it. <laughs> Our listeners, <laughs> you have to you have to imagine George in like the most beautiful, decadent colored shirt possible. George, how you been? What's going on? Your shoulders good. You got double shot from vaccines. You're looking healthier than ever. You got black hairs now again. What's up? You're regressing in age. Yeah, well, um, gee whiz, I hope so. <laughs> I'm a lot older than Larry is, actually. I'm afraid to say how old I am. But um, uh, I am discovering the joys of physical exercise. Nice. So I'm, fi I'm finding, you know, that, that it's, what, what is this called? The, the body is the, the, is the temple of something? Uh, anybody know that? Uh, You're high high in religion. Yeah. But uh, when I get old enough, I might start exercising too. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, I, I had to drive to Knoxville to see a medical specialist last week. And to me, uh, driving, driving in Knoxville is horrible. It's, it's like, you know, and I'm used to driving in New York City and in the San Francisco area. Yeah. And, and to me, it's like driving in Knoxville is horrible. It's worse. No. Than... Yeah. Because no. when they rear end you, they actually get out of their car to apologize. That's, that's, the <laughs> well, I haven't been rear ended. I'm just talking about the confusion at 60 miles an hour. Ah, uh, okay. Mm. Okay. The signs are awful. But like the signs in New York City are terrible too on, on the highways. Sure. 
I think what is it? You just stay off College Drive. That's the only thing you have to do. Isn't that the the moniker? Well, I was going to the University of Tennessee Medical yeah, Center. Yes, you got to stay away. That's the road you stay away from. That's you stay away from all the roads that lead to the university because they're all. But I had to, I had to, that's where I had to go. You'll walk. You walk. That's how you get there. You walk. You walk. Take that bus. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't drive to the university, or else you'll be parking in the middle of the street in the middle of the university. Especially during the game, you'll never get anywhere. You'll never get. Anywhere. Well, I went on. I went on uh, for the first time to be really serious about this. I went on Google street view mm -hmm. and drove my way around the, the, the roads on the campus over and over and over and over again. Nice. And I saw a sign that let me know that nobody else know, told me that it cost $2 to get out of there. <gasps> wow. Yeah. You That's have to crazy. pay an exit toll <clears throat> okay to leave in your car but what it didn't say on google earth mm. or google street view is that the view is old and the that's price funny. has been raised oh, that's to funny. three dollars yeah that's funny <laughs> i i used did my postdoc at the university of uh, knoxville at ut uh university of tennessee and what's yeah. funny is my, the first time I got there, I knew the building that I'd be working at was in the small veterinary building. And so I drove up to the building that says small veterinary building. Cause there's a lot of veterinarian stuff there. There's a lot of agriculture taught there. Right. And our, or like big animal testing. But the funny thing was, is there's a small veterinary building and then a big, small veterinary building. And by, and by that, they refer to the animal size. It's not the size of the building. It's the size of the <laughs> animal that they're describing it by. So when okay. they said, oh, it's in the small veterinary building, I thought, oh, I should look for a sign that says that. It's like, no, you should look for the sign that says we work on small animal buildings, which is actually the bigger veterinary building. And the small veterinary building is for the big animals. And I'm like, this makes no sense. But I found where I needed to work. Long story short. But yeah, signs are very confusing. And stay away from the campuses if you're in a car. That's your pro tip for all the Knoxvilleans out there. Yeah. Uh, guys, I had a really good weekend. I'm having a good weekend so far. Yesterday, I did my first sign language SE session. I, I walked into a meetup group that was hosted in New York, had a bunch of people from all around the country. It was about maybe 30-ish people all together. And we did breakout rooms to just chat with each other. It's basically like, hey, if you're deaf and you're looking for a community, especially with COVID, Come in this, come into this like meetup group, sort of like the meetup rooms that you run with uh, Atheist Society in Knoxville. And then you do like breakup rooms and you'll stay there for like 10 minutes and then you meet together and then you break up again with a different group of people. And I did three sessions all together. First session, I was kind of rusty with my essay, I'll be honest with you, because I was just nervous and I knew I'd have to do a lot of introductions. And the topic that I jumped into was already ongoing. And so they were talking about pet peeves and they're like, what's your pet peeve, Ty? And so I'm like, I don't know the sign for pet peeve. So I asked them to spell it. And I was like, pet peeves, are we talking about pet peeves? They're like, yeah. And then I was like, I don't know what really bothers me. <laughs> I live my entire life trying to like shed away the things that do bother me and only having the things that I do like. So I was just like, uh, uh like what am i around bananas light bulbs do light bulbs bother me? like what can i say to like make myself seem normal and then uh that conversation was awkward but asl pretty good i was able to understand most of the people but the second ones i had a uh, much better time and i talked about the nature of like our where is where you're born defines you and like how can you determine the bias of your own upbringing and, and, and what's the best way to determine that for like the, anybody and like traveling helps a lot. They brought up traveling as a means to do that. I was like, that's a really good way to contrast where you are. Someone mentioned joining the military and realizing what you missed and what things are taken away from you in terms of like, Oh, but I did like doing that, but I can't do it anymore. This is bizarre. Right. Um, and then the very last conversation we had was about gun control. This was in a different room and someone had mentioned, okay, so who should own guns? And they say, in order to own guns, you should have to be in the military or at least have had military service. That's how you can earn having a gun. So if you're in the police office, if you're a police officer, you had to have done military training, been disciplined, and only you can own a gun. And I was thinking like, that's, that, is a, that is a very interesting proposal. We had a really good topic of conversation. I know, I know I'm, I, and my role wasn't to like really defend 
or endorse it. It was just to try to like really engage myself in some sign language and get to know people better in this new capacity. But I'd say this too, as a community, deaf people can't have a much smaller selection pool of people they can have very deep conversations with. And oftentimes they have to rely on a church to be the foundation of their community. So they are oftentimes very religious. And, and because of that, they don't have an opportunity to really critique like their beliefs a lot. There's not even a word for atheist in si American sign language. You have to say not believing person. Like that's the word. It's three different signs you have to combine to say atheist. They're like, what does he mean you're an atheist? Like I can spell it out and be like, I've heard of that, but I don't really know what it means. I'm like, ah, this is bizarre. So there are communities like how there are communities that are worth reaching out to. Um, I'm going to try to continue to work harder to reach out to this community, but, uh, we should just be mindful that not everyone is blessed <laughs> with being able to like reach out to friends like this. Larry, what's mm. up? Well, I, I taught a, a class, a combined class of deaf students from Knoxville school of deaf and KCC, KCCD. And, uh, we had several, it was a computer class and they didn't have certain signs. Like they didn't have a sign for carriage return. Well, mm -hmm. so we took an R and we did this. We okay. like did this kind of a semi, like a, a return. Yeah. Uh, we did a cursor with like a light, you know, like okay. that. But we did this because okay. the cursor was blank. So what you might do is create a sign for atheism. Right. Uh, what is what is A? This? A is this. Uh, yeah. And then you can just do the 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 sign for the atheist day with the circle around it sure yeah yeah that'd be yeah. great yeah, yeah that's not one, bad so that's not bad do it that's not bad publicize it yeah that's not bad that's not bad i actually yeah, like that i'll think about great. that next time yeah all right so uh we got five minutes in this first half but i want to do a double dip in dualism and have scott lead us in that convo so how about could, hey larry would you be cool if we uh mark the show half a little bit early and then give us more time for the second half sure you're Sweet. Ready? Let's do it. Scott, we're going to get right into you after this half. Let's do it. Okay. All right. Um, this is the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour on WOZO Radio 103.9 LP FM here in Knoxville, Tennessee. And we'll be right back after this short break. 103.9 FM, WOZO Radio, Knoxville. Hello, welcome back to the second half of the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour on WOZO Radio 103.9 here in Knoxville, Tennessee. I'm Dr. Five, and this is Sunday, April 18th, 2021. Uh, let's talk about the Atheist Society of Knoxville just for a moment. Founded in 2002, we're in our 19th year. We've got over a thousand members, and we have weekly Zoom meetings to keep our community going, as it were, at this time of COVID. You can find us online on Facebook, or at meetup.com or Google simply by typing in Knoxville Atheist. By the way, if you don't live in Knoxville, you should still go to Meetup and search for a group, Atheist group, free thought group in your town. Don't find one? Start Start one. one. That's right. Hey, you want back where you want to pick up. Hey, we're going to do a double dip into dualism. And why I'm excited about this is because I wanted to have Scott in the original conversation. So, Scott, open doors, dualism, what's on your mind? What is All dualism? Right. We talked about what is yeah. dualism last week, George. Come on. Come on. Yeah, we did. We did. Yeah, I don't look surprised. You it's sure. worth right. Right. Come on. Come on. <laughs> I'll play I'll give you the link to the video of you <laughs> explaining it to us. Explaining Scott. it. Yeah. Scott. Yeah. So just as a reminder, I would say uh dualism the way I understand it is for some particular thing to have two fundamental kinds of categories or aspects of itself okay. and, or principle about itself. So like maybe in theology, you could say, you know, there's good and evil, there's God, and the devil, that's a kind of dualism. Mm -hmm. And in, okay. you know, then there's the mind body problem. There's the mind and then there's the body, but it's Which all, what we talked yeah. about last week mostly was the mind body dualism. Yeah, the identity issue, <laughs> mind and body. So like, us I, versus I, I'm, I'm them. mind or my body. No, it's like is, I'm on my mind or my my body, or are they are is, are they in fact the same thing, or are they two different things possibly? Right. right. 
Yeah. Or is there two different aspects at least to it? You know, so it, it's kind of an endless debate. It's been going on for centuries, of course. And, and really when it comes to consciousness science, there oh, is yeah. no consensus on that. That's but what's, what to remember. But what's your opinion? That's what we want to know. We, I think we discussed the general last week. We want to really know what individually we think about it. And that's right. what we took into the second half. Where, where are you on dualism? Are you convinced that? So, I would say that um, ontologically, I don't know. So like when I say ontologically, I mean metaphysically or whatever, like the grounding of it all, I, I don't know. I have no idea, but I can say that I observe a difference between behavior and experience. Like, you know, um, you step on my foot, I say, ouch, that's yeah. a behavior. Hmm. But then that says nothing about what's really going on in my brain. It may not hurt at all. I may oh. just be saying that or, you know, so there's a little difference. There is a different aspect to the same thing going on. So at least in that sense, there's a dualism going on. I think you could say, um, but if you're talking about, well, is there a soul? Like, is there a, uh, this thing thing outside of the physicality? I don't know if that's the case. I don't think that it seems like I have any reason to think there is. Um, but there is this odd little, there is the, there is these conceptual gaps though. That's the problem. And I think we have a, my, a philosopher of mine called, uh, David Chalmers, who's made this, uh, he's kind of coined the phrase, the hard problem of consciousness, hmm. which basically highlights that conceptual gap that, you know, yeah, we have a brain, we have neurons, we have that interaction. That's all easy stuff. We can easily correlate those things. Nobody, even a dualist would, would go along with that. That's part of dualism to say, yeah, there's the brain. If you, if you affect the brain, it's going to affect the experience. Nobody cares about that. That's the easy problem. The sure. hard problem is why is there an experience in the first place? Like, why okay. is it necessary for there to be an experience? Yeah, so the, let's the phenomenal there. experience of consciousness. Yeah. yeah. Cause I feel like both my mind and my body have different dialogues within me. Right. And I can wake up in the morning with my alarm clock going off and my body's like, I want to sleep more, but my mind's like, you got to wake up and go to work so that we can afford to keep this alarm clock working. But it's <laughs> 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 like, screw the alarm clock. Let's just keep sleeping. And I can hear, I either I am part of that conversation and I'm one of those identities, or I'm listening to this conversation take place between with that. And I'm just like a spectator in it, but I have, mm. I have felt and heard or experienced that dialogue. And I'm like, which one of these is me or are they both me? And, but they are very much at odds with each other. They don't feel like they are, uh, compatible identities. They just feel like mind body arguing with each other. And then the, the overlay, the Venn diagram overlay of that is my, is me, the identity of myself. So mm -hmm. I, I, the question of like, why do we even have those experiences in the first place might be a really, really interesting question. Like, why do we talk to ourselves? Why can't we just behave automatically and get the things that we need to get done done? What is the value of this inner thought process that we seem to develop maybe evolutionarily speaking? Right. Uh, could, could it be like, could all this stuff go on in the dark, so to speak? Like, you know, if we have, if we create computers yeah. that, you know, run algorithms and do things, do those things, do we think those things have to have an experience to go along with it? If we assume that they do not, then why do we have an experience that goes along with our computing and algorithms that we run in our brain? And a lot of people will kind of uh, contradict themselves and say, well, evolution saw it fit to give us experience because it kind of motivates us to avoid pain and go towards what feels good. Hmm. But then again, we can create computers to do the same thing there's no real necessity there and then some people would argue well maybe it's a byproduct like you know kind of like um you know um we have an appendix it has no real function it just kind of 
comes out of the evolutionary process. But then that opens Scott, up a lot of questions too, though. You know, if you don't want me interjecting, George wants to ask yeah. something, then dread, then Larry. <laughs> George, what do you <laughs> want to say? <laughs> okay, sorry. Well, <laughs> well my, my first question. Say? My first question is, when Tyrone's cat asks himself this question, what answer does he give himself? And my second question is, does Tyrone's cat even care? My, my cat has a name. But yeah, I never. I don't know if I told you. I don't know what your cat's <laughs> name sorry, sorry, is. Sorry, sorry, sorry. It's Vinny. <laughs> it's Vinny. It's Vinny? Vinny? Yeah, Vinny. Like my cousin Vinny. I love it. Yeah, okay. it's great. Yeah, it's my cat Vinny. Yeah. Uh, who knows? I don't know what my cat's thought processes are. We don't. We'll never know. Mm. Unless we put electrodes in his brain, you know. Even then, we just tell us, it would only tell us what the electrodes tell us. It wouldn't necessarily tell us yeah. the actual experience. <laughs> you can put electrodes in my brain and still not know what I'm thinking. Who knows? Dread, what do you got? Uh, well, I was just going to uh, follow up to Scott there to, to say that there's actually a growing body of uh, uh, research that indicates that... Um, our body knows what it's going to do before our brains do. Yeah. Or, you know what I mean? Yeah. That, um, yeah. You know, the, the different monitoring gadgets uh, and electrodes planted in the brain, e ECGs and fMLRs or F functional MRIs mm -hmm. um, are, are showing uh, where different activity is being fired up in anticipation like milliseconds or microseconds right. or whatever uh, before we actually perform the action that we think we're doing a volition. Yeah. Like the um, cognitive yeah. experience is very much, I'm it's thinking delayed. things that I've already figured out. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Like so, even yeah. that response, it, it, I already knew I was going to make that response before I can make the words to make the response. It's crazy. Exactly. And, and this is always, and this, certainly this is my, my problem with the idea of dualism is that it, it actually, precludes the idea that there's a homunculus inside my body that's, you know, kind of watching the Cartesian screen, like Daniel sure. Dennett yeah, yeah, yeah. talked about the Cartesian theater. But the, then the suggestion goes like the Russian nesting dolls, is that who's the homunculus within the homunculus? And and that just, <laughs> and that just goes on forever. <laughs> it goes on and on and on. Yeah. Right. It goes on and on and on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's the inside out problem. Uh, and it, and it, it points to dualism, though, in a way, some would argue, because it would say, well, you're kind of detached from the physical processes that are coming up before you're aware of the decision you made. It's almost like seconds after your body has done this thing, there's this other thing called an experience that that confuses the two hmm. that says, I made a decision. Scott, I'd like to get Larry's response, and then you can get everybody's. Larry, what was the thing you wanted to say? Well, I think I think you say, why do we have these experiences? I think it's a, a survival value. Uh, we have these actual detached thought processes that we can run through our that run scenarios through our minds mm. before we actually experience those scenarios mm. to hopefully uh, take us to some kind of objective or. Um, and where we can see that it's going to end badly or good. Right. Um, what really concerns me or really makes me wonder is what about the uncontrolled virtual experiences that we have in dreams? Mm. I mean, that's another whole world. We got exactly. all these experiences while we're waking and we have virtual experiences while we're thinking about it. But then we have these uncontrolled virtual experiences in dreams, which... Mm -hmm. Uh, I, can go I would recommend your direction at all. <laughs> yeah, I would recommend a really good book. I just finished reading it's, uh, from Paul Davies, who's a, a astrophysicist. Um, it's called Demon in the Machine, and it's and it's really a a, a stab at um, uh, trying to figure out what the uh, what the source of consciousness is, and 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 that it may be based on uh, a reality around information or a dimension of information. It's, it's very, very provocative. I would mm. highly recommend it. Okay, definitely. Scott, I'd love to get your feedback on this. So like the idea of what Larry was saying, is, it, is this a conversation that we're having with ourselves just a survival mechanism? Or is it, you know, are we just voicing things that we've already processed, but are trying to maintain like sanity by giving it like a dialogue? And can cats do it too? Can my cat do it? <laughs> yeah, right. Take your pick. So, 
I was, um, I can only appeal back to people that know more about this stuff than me. So I, I read like a lot of stuff. There's a book from um, Donald Hoffman and um, he's like a neuroscientist and university professor in Irvine, California, by the way. And um, he has a unique perspective, but yeah, he says that consciousness is um, a survival technique and it's for procreating and um, uh, uh, yeah, yeah, passing on our genes. So he says that in evolution, we did not evolve to know the truth about the world or the ontological reality, but to know how we can pass our genes on to the next um, generation. So right. he gives examples of like uh, I think like beetles and some thing where there are a certain color, like a kind of a goldish tannish color and they, their conscious experience is of this color. And that's how they mate and procreate because they see other beetles of this color. Then they know to go mate with that beetle, but they did an experiment. They, they put down uh, beer bottles, which are the same color as these beetles. And they found that all the beetles got onto the beer bottle and tried to mate with it. <laughs> so the consciousness didn't get them the truth, but it gave them just enough to try to pass their genes on within their environment. So this kind of shows that, that consciousness, the function of consciousness is to kind of lead you into uh, what's going to be better for your species. As for the dream thing, what Larry was saying, that kind of um, reminded me of what Sam Harris said one no. time. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, Sam Harris was like, because Eric isn't question. here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sam Harris said, I think he said, um, what what's really odd is how how can I have a dream about a joke and I catch the punchline and think it's funny? Like, if it comes from me, then why would I find the joke funny or why would I like find something novel about that within my sure. dream? Sure. Hmm. So it's kind of weird, but he sometimes <laughs> never says anything particularly great. <laughs> he just says things slowly that people are like, "Oh, wow, Sam Harris said that." But it's like he's, yeah. Bruce, Springsteen, he's the Bruce Springsteen of people who are saying things on in front of mics. And it's like the thing that bothers me most is Bruce Springsteen has a podcast with Barack Obama. It's called something like Rebels or something like that, and it's like. The conversation is like, you're talking to Barack Obama, the president of the United States, Nobel laureate, you know, Peace Prize winning, strongest person or most powerful person in the world. You play a guitar, yet you're talking as if, yeah, we both did cool things, didn't we? Yeah, it was pretty awesome when you did a cool thing and I did a cool thing. It's like, we're basically the same person, right? It's like, no, you are not. Don't, yeah, don't yeah. even pretend. And I feel like yeah, yeah. there's a lot of that from people. Anyway, that's my little soapbox mm. getting off of it. Yeah, I think <laughs> dualism is an interesting concept, especially with that idea of like, what's the value of it since we do it all the time? Dread. I have a question. I was, I was going to uh, just mention uh, another book I've read uh, by Daniel Kahneman, who um, is a uh, very prestigious uh, neuroscientist. Uh, who has this book called Thinking Fast and Slow. And he talks about system one and system two kinds of thinking. Yeah. System one being the one that's, you know, uh, you know very reactionary, uh, instinctual, and that the other one is the slow thinking. So that it actually happens after the system one thinking has already transpired. And so yeah. it, it was. it's a very interesting, because that gives you the sort of sense of dualism, but it's actually a process that's being undertaken by your brain because that's how the brain is constructed. That's how the brain works, right? Mm -hmm. It's just yeah. a natural, a natural function of it. I follow George. Um, you know, I'm, I'm thinking about the relationship between these concepts and the situations that are troubling us in the world today. Uh, we, we got a lot of really severe problems going on, uh, I, th I feel. Can we apply any of this knowledge to dealing with the troubles that are facing us? You know, the, yeah. the potential for the planet to burn up, the political um, leanings sure. that are emerging in different societies and different countries around the world toward authoritarianism. How do we uh, get 
a message of sanity out into the populace when they're listening constantly to a different drumbeat through different media. So, George, I'd like to touch on what you're saying, because I think that touches on why I personally think dualism exists. I mm -hmm. kind of touches also on what Larry was saying, but it's more pessimistic in a way, but also still valuable. So I think we have these cognitive conversations with ourselves, not so that we can construct models or evolutionarily the value of it came from, not from trying to figure out ways to, to, to procreate or, or, or like find like ways to improve, improve our life or get like benefits. It was to avoid bad things that hadn't happened yet. So like if you mm -hmm. almost get, for example, in a car accident, like say you just barely skid past it, you didn't get in a car accident. You're still on the road. The, like the car swerved past you, you are fine. But in your head, you can process, huh, I almost got on a car accident. Why did I almost get in a car accident? Did I make sure the light was running? No, I was on my cell phone. I need to make sure I'm not on my cell phone because I can get in car accidents. You're having these conversations separately all the time yeah almost constantly. as a way of looking back of like was there a tiger really in that bush maybe i should maybe i should right. be out here do I, do, I assume the, do I assume the russell is a predator or do i yeah. assume it's the wind now because to, likely, the saying. people with the wind are not going to be the ones that survive now just to finish this up to touch on what george was saying uh like hey the temperature is getting hotter I'm not on fire yet, but why is the temperature getting hotter? Why is there more pollution in the ocean? Why are there okay. more plastic being generated? And I'm thinking, I'm thinking of, of the psychology of the society that's around me. Yes. As, yeah. I, as I speak right now, a different kind of dualism, perhaps, but it's a mental process that divides people into us and them. But, we, but I feel like that is, that, is the, that is the application of the topic that we are dealing with right now, which is why are we having these conversations? It's because evolutionarily we developed this for danger recognition. And so when we are having these kinds of conversations, these dualistic sort of like what's wrong that will be wrong in the future, what's going on wrong now that'll be a bigger problem later on, that is our core and it touches all of our fear and like, you know, uh, adrenaline and hormonal stress uh, triggers. I feel like it's, that is because this dualism process that we go through is for recognizing dangers and trying to avoid them, or at least inform ourselves of the danger so that we can come up with a better means mm -hmm. of that behavior, because otherwise okay. we will continue yeah. to be stressed out by them. And I can guarantee yes. you, I, I can at least guarantee, at least this is my final point. Should we solve the problems that we are currently aware of right now, we will find additional problems to, to supplement of course, that, of that course. biological thing because it's core to who we are as organisms right at this point. It's not just a, mm. oh, there's a problem, let's fix it. Now there's no problems. It's what's the next thing we need to look for because that's a part of, that's a mechanic in your brain that's constantly looking for things to be recognized as danger and try to improve it because that's evolutionarily beneficial for us to constantly improve. But yeah. That's a great think, point. Great point. Because I think the brain doesn't know the difference between real situations and simulated situations. Sometimes just remembering a bad traumatic uh, moment can be just as bad. You relive that. You're in moment. my head right now. Yeah. You're yeah. absolutely yeah, I feel like there's so much truth to that. Your brain does have problems like, oh, I remember that time. It's like, why oh, are you remembering? Why are you why are you reminding me of that right now? I'm shaving. And that was like sixteen years ago. It's like, yeah, you farted in third grade. It's like everybody farted, <laughs> man. Like, you remember that? What's going on? Yeah. yeah. Remember that time you ate birthday cake and the thing fell off your spoon and it was like, oh, you're wrecking my whole day. What, what is that? Why would you do that, brain? It's like, just letting you know where you are in life. That's right. <laughs> Bring you back down to earth. Yeah, don't get too cocky. It's beneficially for you to, to recognize. So that's you know, and how do, I, how do I talk with my neighbor across the street? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, when, when he... When he espouses racist BS at me. Hey, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're good. You're safe. You, know? you slid. But you I slid mean, I mean, the, you know, the, the, the monkey on my back is just yelling at me constantly right now. How do we save the planet? How do we, right. you know, um, you have a the, monkey on your back saying that and you have a lizard in your brain saying like, <laughs> just how do I, what can I kill? Just tell me what to kill and what we can eat mm. and what we can have sex with. I, that's the only thing I care about. Yeah, right. And yeah, then you have you, brain. <laughs> and then you just have you in the front prefrontal cortex being like, what's going on with all these monkeys and lizards? I, I, yeah. got, I gotta do 
work. What's going on over here? I'm just trying to walk. See, in. see the the um, the dualism in my mind, in a way, is I'm looking at a dualism in in the society in the country yeah. around me. Is that the people I'm I like to hang out with are people who uh, take pleasure in our differences. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, in, mm -hmm. in, in all the different experiences that each of us bring to the table mm -hmm. from our own backgrounds, yeah. our own ethnicities, our own, you know, religious upbringing, whatever. And, and I'm, I'm opposing this in my mind to people who just see all of this as a threat. Right. I, mm -hmm. at, at my last, so that's a different kind of dualism, right? Yeah. It's a different kind of dualism. Yeah, different yes, kind of, of course. And I'd actually touch on this. I'd say, you know, very way back when we used to solve every problem by eating the thing that bothered us or killing the thing that bothered us, right? <laughs> like that was the solution to every problem. Like is Ugg bothering you? Just kill Ugg. What are you doing? Just move on. But now we are rapidly developing societally, but not so much biologically such that we still have hangups from, you know, you know, cave times thousands of years ago as part of like our mental functions. And this new idea of, people living with each other, respecting everybody and treating them how they want to be treated and understanding that they're not going to think the same way you're going to think that that's okay. As long as you can figure out means of working together in a, in a productive society, that is not a new, that is a, not a thing that we are physically prepared for. It is a thing that we have to teach people very much in many senses of the way. Like this is how you conduct yourself in society. This is why you're going to public school. <laughs> so you can get in a couple of fights and realize punching hurts people and getting, <laughs> so you yeah. don't become a little monster. You gotta, you gotta know where you are in life. You're not very strong. You're fragile. You gotta understand that. And then, um, I feel like just overall, we're having these conversations now we're documenting them, but if we are around say 50,000 years from now, I think this will be, these videos like this will be very interesting because the evolved humans will look back and be like, what are they talking about? I had a conversation with myself saying I was upset. It's like, why didn't they just push the button to make them happy and resolve everything and ask the computer to figure out everything for them? It's just like, uh -huh. because back then we didn't have that. We just had this. This is the most powerful thing we had. And this wasn't perfect yet. And so we had to, there are some weird evolutionary hangups and hooks, but for the most part, we're making do with what we got. And I think as long as we know that they're processes and not reality, like as, as long as we understand their models to construct society and, and figure out how to treat people better and not reality as it is, and that we can improve this process, I think we'll come out of it. Okay. Yeah. Um, ironically, um, you know, talking to my, my, uh, Zen Buddhist friend from years ago, um, he, of course, you know, in Buddhism, they don't believe in dualism. You know, they, they don't even believe in a self. They, they think that the self and dualism and all that kind of stuff, free will, all that illusion. kind of stuff is um, illusion. And so illusion. they also believe in the principle of compassion. And so they say that this sort of dualism, this sort of separ separation of mind, body, this kind of philosophy um, increases less compassion instead of more compassion they said when you kind of see everything as a one a oneness then you kind of want to increase the because really in, in their philosophy it's all about experience you know human experience that you know that's what that's what we're aiming for and trying to make better yeah so you have principles of well-being principles of suffering um, dis disattachment things like that so buddhism has the idea of like the biggest illusion that exists is separation because like right. really everything is one thing. And so you have a vested interest in, in treating things around you. Well, correct. Correct. And I can understand that logic as well. I do think it's kind of cool that the material that needed to make my body was here mm -hmm. even at the beginning of the universe and will mm -hmm. still be here well after I'm gone. It's just mm -hmm. arranged differently. So like at that point, it's just like, I was here since the beginning. It doesn't feel as mm -hmm. scary anymore. So like, yeah, it's, I have an invested interest in this universe because I'm a part of it. Yeah. Regardless that's of the, the karma, the yeah. karma. Back no, that's karma. not the karma. <laughs> that's, just, that's, just, that's just particles in space and I'm fine with that's that. Right. That's right. Fine with that. Hey, I feel no like we're, entropy. Getting, we're getting close to the end. Dread, I want you to keep me updated on this headband uh, shenanigan. The second you get your clearance card, let me know because that's cool. Right. Absolutely, you bet. Because next, know the whole the, the whole past variant community around the world is uh, we're all watching each other, so they're yeah. certainly watching this. So yeah, I'll definitely Cur share. 
Here's my thing. Slightly bigger headbands each time. Just slightly. <laughs> <laughs> Until it turns into a turban. <laughs> right. like, look at this picture. You, you approved this last time. You're saying one millimeter bigger and you're not going right. to let me get it. What, what are you exactly. saying? What are you saying? You let the Christian get through. Come sounds on. Pretty arbitrary to me. Yeah, yeah it sounds pretty bad. Sure. The camel yeah. nose under the tent. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, Scott, safe travels. I hope your cousin's doing well. I hope you have a good time. Thanks for teaching us. Oh, I've already been. That was last weekend. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I just hope, you know, it's a, it's a, yeah. oh. if you travel again in the future, I hope your cousin's health stays well. You know, we're okay. still in a pandemic, you know, like traveling uh, and health is. Like, I got vaccinated. Good. I'm supposed to travel next month to uh, Cancun, Mexico. Nice, nice. So Good I had to get vaccinated. So I got, my vaccine was done last month. So, uh, yes, yeah, so my mom just got her Scott? second vaccination. So I'm really happy about that, too. Yeah. How old are you, Scott? uh 53 okay not bad. Not bad. i'm 56 and i'm probably still two months out that is ridiculous come to america we'll, we'll, we'll get you shot up <laughs> we'll get you shot up oh, uh george george what's something that you'd recommend we check out before next week this here this is great coffee <laughs> coffee no, coffee. coffee. This, this coffee. stuff is really, really good, and it's very affordable. Larry and I were talking about coffee, and uh, I just want to recommend this stuff as as a wonderful espresso. So, for our listeners, very, what are you holding? Are you I am a holding a bag of pilon, P I L O N. It's in a brick, and it's very easy to find. Mm. It's a, a great espresso coffee, Cuban style. Coffee. Ooh, very cool. Ready Looks like it's in a very, very nice dry container. Nice. Yeah, and I'm I'm used to really good coffee, and this stuff, you know, really uh, is, is worth it. <sighs> nice. I have my opinions on how we have normalized certain psychoactive ingredients as like a a common thing <laughs> but yeah. i will hold it until next meeting maybe we'll talk about that because i feel like we just okay. normalize some things that are just like hmm come on guys larry <laughs> <laughs> i'll tell you this larry i really 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 wanted to know what uh this thing called atheism was but oh. and i found a book <laughs> about what it's all about <laughs> it's called the bible have you ever heard about it it says basically all atheists are going to hell and i feel like this tells yeah. me everything about what atheism is all about is yeah, there any other athe- but i'd love the second opinion <laughs> i'd yeah. love the second opinion is there any other book out there for me well the bible also says all atheists are fools but i mean it's not a big surprise the, the book that says you got to read it and got to live by it and, and believe it also says people who don't are fools big yeah surprise yeah, yeah, yeah anyway my book is called atheism what's it all about and it's available on amazon um uh, you can go to my my uh, website though and read most of the contents it's digitalfreethought.com be sure to click on the blog button uh, we have archives of our atheist songs radio shows uh, this blog i mean uh many articles on the subject that are in my book and actually more that are on the the digital free thought blog if you have any questions for this show you can send them to ask an atheist at knoxvilleatheist.org we'll answer them on future shows if you're having trouble leaving your religious beliefs behind having emotional troubles uh physical or whatever uh you can go to recovering from religion Dot org for help and uh, if you're facing abuse or something I'm sure that they can uh, point you in the right direction if you're watching this on YouTube be sure to like and subscribe this has been the digital free thought radio hour remember that everybody is going to somebody else's hell the time to worry about it is when they prove the heavens and hells and souls are real until then don't sweat it enjoy your life and we'll see you here next week at seven o'clock on W zero radio in Knoxville, Tennessee. See you later. Say bye, everybody. Hi, everybody. Bye, everybody. Bye. Check me out 8 a.m. on Sundays. Mind Pirate. Here's- oh, cool. did we forget you, Dread? Yeah. Mind oh, okay. Pirate. Got to check them out. Mind P Y R A T. Yeah. yeah. I'll make sure that makes it in. Yeah, me too. Me too. See you, everybody. What kind of time? What kind of time on Sunday? Eastern? Oh, yeah. Western? Yeah. Uh, it's, Central? It's 8, 8 a.m. Pacific time. 8 a.m. Pacific. Okay. Pacific. Cool. All right. Mm-hmm. Yeah.